Hi guys, um, my name is Steve Prenic. I come from University of Applied Sciences. That's the new name. So, uh, former name was Polytechnic of Zagreb. Now it's called University of Applied Sciences. Um, I am a teacher there and among other things I teach dynamic web programming, mostly PHP with some JavaScript on the, on the client side. So, why this talk? Uh, I want to talk about this, and just about this, but the guys said that there are no lightning talks today, so they asked me to make this more PHP beginners adequate, and I tried to, to do something that I would gladly show to my students. Unfortunately, the first slide is what I get from my students. So this is a code taken directly from uh, W3 school, directly from there, and it probably looks like something you wrote when you wrote your first PHP program. Uh, I won't go into details except about this. This is the, the wrong part, and most of you did that. Show of hands who didn't do this on their first program. So, so everybody did, did this. For the guys who stayed at home, the problem with this is there is no checkup if this is okay. And the second problem, obvious problem, is that this is prone to SQL injection. Directly two problems. So, a slightly better code. I usually get this from my students, so I say a lot of bad things to them. So I get something like this. So firstly, I say to them that they must validate that the data they got is really what they wanted. So I won't go into hash IDs and stuff like that. Let's say that it's a normal number. So they need to check it, that's uh, integer. So they check it for, for, the, for the type. And secondly, they need to use a uh, real escape string so they can check against uh, SQL injection. It's, it's not a check, it just escapes the string, but it adds some level of protection, let's say. So, this is probably the second stuff you did, most of you, and I know I did like that. And it has some pros and some cons. It's got only one pro and it's fast. You, you use the native extension which comes with PHP. The guys try to make it as fast as possible. So the cons are all of these. Uh, you need to hand write all the queries. So you, not, you need to know SQL. Um, if you change the database, then you need to rewrite all the calls to the database. If you're changing it from MySQL to PostgreSQL, then change everything. And that's a problem. Uh, it's not too, too uh, object-oriented friendly, and you need to manual track of inserts and, and updates, so if you're doing anything, you need to know which ID of which element, or whatever field you, you're updating it, you need to, to know what you're doing. So, that's not what you want if you're doing a really big project. Then, probably the next step, when we came from beginner to beginner plus, beginner plus plus is to use PHP data objects. PDO, everybody's using this, or everybody used to use it. Uh, it's a much nicer uh, way to, to do the stuff, do, to do the quer queries, and uh, it had some pros, at least more than, than the standard native calls. Uh, I won't go into, into code, this is just for those who really want to, to see it. What are the pros, what are the cons? The pros are that it's lightweight and it's consistent and you can connect different databases. If you uh, make a normal call using PHP data objects, it doesn't matter which database you're using. But I'm lying a little bit because the SQL is handwritten and you need to, to know the uh, dialect of your database. There are always slight differences between databases, so 
you're writing a SQL query and you're hoping that it will work on another database. For so simple select or insert it will work, but for anything complicated you'll have problems. Uh, what you get is better security through name parameters and they are automatically escaped through PDO and you can use prepared statements. With prepared statements, uh, some statements will run a little bit faster and you are uh, more sure that you won't have any problems later on. Um, the problem with this is there is still, still no good object-oriented support, so you're still writing a lot of code and then doing a lot of different things to get the, the data out. And then the question is, what about object-oriented programming? What can I do to have an object of some class and what I need to do to get load and what I need to do to get save. And this is, this is, this is not even remotely what, what you need to do. This is just the problem. How to load, how to save. But they have only two, two attributes, just an ID and some text. So you can start thinking about it. What do I need to do? So we can add something. For example, one, one problem is Okay, if I, if I need to get something from the database, I need to get some find. Okay, I'll find by what? By ID, by some special field. How will I make a, a smart find? Second problem is what if I want to create a new object and I need to save it? Then I don't have an ID. That ID is something, nothing. Uh, I put minus one. I know that's not the smartest idea here, but it's just for an example. Uh, put a minus one and if it's a negative then you know that that's a new object and if it's some positive number then probably you're getting an ID from the database or you have an article from the database. So the problem is and was, if you're not using a norm, how to get an object from the database or to save it to the database. And as I said, we have ORMs. ORM is an object relation mapping. Uh, it's a technique to, uh, and uh, frameworks or, or software which helps uh, to get this. You get the object which has some properties and it can have some relationships to other, prop to other objects and you can save those to database or get them from the database and the relationships and all the attributes stay the same. You, you get them as they are. Uh, normally people call it persistence. So you can save and load objects to, to a, relation, a relation database. So uh, I'm not talking about MongoDB and stuff like that where you're using documents as a base. I'm talking about relation uh, databases like MySQL or any other SQL database. In short, like I tell to my students, you get the situation, the data from the database is mapped to some class, to an object of some class, and you can get data from real objects mapped back to, to rows in your SQL database. That, that's the, the whole idea. Orms do all the heavy lifting. If you need to write some SQL, uh, no, you're just using objects. You just use an object, set some uh, properties of it, and then you say save or flush or something like that. If you need to load something, you say, okay, I want an object, find it in database we, we, by those parameters. It needs to be that ID or it needs to be name like something. So you're just using objects and not writing SQL. So all searching, updating, deleting, all is done by simple commands instead of writing a SQL query. And uh, you get the persistency to objects and uh, most PHP ORMs use PDO in the background. So you don't need to worry that your unescaped input will do something bad in your database. The, the whole system works for you and not against you. So, 
those were, that was for the, for the beginners. Then we can talk about, we can talk to those who know a little bit more. So, there are two main patterns used in uh, ORMS. Martin Fowler in its pattern of enterprise application architecture from 2003, that's a book, he wrote about object-oriented uh, patterns and uh, he noticed that there are two main patterns when we're talking about ORMS. One is active record and the other one is data mapper. Active record uh, has an in-memory object which represents the, the data you want and that object carries both the data and the knowledge how to connect to the database and how to update, insert or whatever it needs to do with the database. So the object has all the knowledge it needs. It's, it's self-sustaining. In data mapper systems, the in-memory data object is just data. It doesn't know how to connect to database. It doesn't know how to update or do anything with the database. Database is separated from the in-memory object. There is a special additional object or class, a mapper, who knows how to connect the data and the database. What's nice that sometimes, in some ORMs, a one mapper can work with several different classes and it knows how to connect a real object to the real database. And then always comes an example. So what's the idea? The idea is if you have an active record, you have one object of some class and it has the insert, update, delete or any other function you need. So when you say I need a new person and you say like it's, it's last name and first name is something like this, you just say person insert and it will directly work with the database. In the data mapper example, you create a person but that person doesn't have any connection to the database. It doesn't know how it's mapped or anything like that. I know that some amongst you will now say, no, it's not true. Uh, doctrine uses uh, annotations to tell how, the, how it's mapped in, in the memory. But the idea of data mapper is that the object doesn't know how it's connected to the database. It doesn't have any clue. There is a mapper in between who does all the heavy lifting. It knows how to insert, how to update, or how to delete. And then, if we're creating a new person, this person is a lightweight data representation. This is just the data. We need a mapper who will then do an insert of this person to the database. And that's the only difference. Where the knowledge about the database lies. It's either in the mapper or it's directly in the object which represents the data. When we look at PHP worms, oops, nope, uh, that's the next slide. Uh, when we look at active record uh, ORMs, they are mostly used when we're talking about uh, database mindset or in, in CRUD environment. You're thinking about tables and you're just thinking, okay, I have that row and the another row. Those two rows are two different objects and they are not especially connected. So when an object represents one or a few tables in database, so you're, you're talking about uh, uh, simple rows and simple joins, then mostly active record is used. I say mostly. You can do all, all different things with active record without a problem. Data mapper, da data mapper when you read the, the documentation, it says that it's mostly used when object is scattered in several tables in that database. Again, it's not always true. There are a lot of uh, uses where data mapper is used on very simple tables just because it's there as a, a best form for, for the programmer or for the project. In PHP, there are a lot of different active record forms, but there is only one data mapper form which is okay. I, I'm, tell, I'm not telling that doctrine is just okay, it's great, but if you're looking just for okay, you can get almost anything. I don't know if anybody among you know a data mapper ORM which is at least okay. Nope, all 
all are using the doctrine. Yeah. Uh, if you're looking for active record, there are a lot of different active record uh, ORMs. Uh, you, can, you can find it in almost any framework. Almost every framework has something like, it, uh, like that. Uh, Laravel has Eloquent. Doctrine 1 was based on active record. Uh, Code Igniter has uh, an interesting thing. It has a data mapper ORM library which doesn't use data mapper uh, pattern, but it uses active record uh, pattern. So I don't know what's the, with that. Um, if you're not using any framework, because uh, most Yi uses uh, active record uh, pattern uh, ORM. Uh, Cake PHP used to use an active record uh, ORM. Uh, if you're not using any of those, Propel is, it seems that it's got, it's got a decent documentation, so people are using it if they're, they're not using any of the frameworks, because most frameworks come with an active record ORM. The exception is Symfony, which comes directly with Doctrine, and it's okay. And now I'll, just for the beginners who stayed at home, uh, go through some of the typical uses. Unfortunately, it doesn't show a, a, the screen. And to be honest, I'm not an eloquent or the doctrine expert. So if I'm telling something wrong, just correct me in the question section. <laughs> or you can correct me right away, I, I don't mind. So. To get it minimally, to get uh, Eloquent to work, you just need to extend the model. And when you create this class, it expects to get a table which is called flight. If you want to connect to any other table, you just write it in the configuration. I just took the, the simplest uh, example I could find. So if you're having a flight, it must be called table flight, unless you configure it differently. It must have a, a primary key called ID, unless you configure it differently. And then for the, the guys who stayed at home, you can just say, okay, I need a flight, find one. This one says ID one. Add any, uh, put, uh, put any other number here and you will get that record. That's the, that's the simple stuff. Uh, if you want to search for something, then you just say, okay, instead of just find, say where, and then add whatever you need. In this case, it says, okay, I'll uh, find me whatever uh, row which has active with value one. And then because it can get uh, a lot of different rows, just give me the first one. So when you get uh, uh, one flight, either by directly getting an ID, putting a where, this can be much, comp much more complicated than this. This is just a simple example. The next is what to do with it. So we have a flight, we have one object somewhere in memory, and we can do something with it. We can delete it. This will delete the, the row with ID one. This one will change the name and then it will save the data back. And that's the idea, there is no SQL here. Absolutely no SQL. Everything is done somewhere in, uh, in, the, in the system and you don't need to know anything about it. It can have relationships. If you have another table or, or if you have another class which extends eloquent, which is just called comment, and then you need to have the same, uh, the table with the same name, or as I said, you can configure some other name. You can do the uh, relationship that this has many comments, and then you can ask, okay, give me all posts that have comments, any comments, or it has comments more than three. So you can get just the data you want much faster than writing a standard SQL line. And when you, you get all those posts, those posts are directly connected to comments so you can get all the, all the data behind it. Um, Eloquent is neatly uh, coupled with Laravel, so Laravel has schema builder and it has migrations, so you can say that when you are creating a new database, you can say, what database you need, what are the attributes needed there, 
and it will create a migration, a file which says, okay, now build me a database with those fields. So it will in fact build an alternation, uh, create table or it will uh, alternate the, the uh, existing table. Uh, migrations are nice because they have, uh, they can be used as a version control of your database through time because you will get the each change inside the, the system will have will be somewhere documented so it's nice to use it okay uh, i could talk about uh, eloquent much more and the documentation is really really good but as I said, I'm not the expert in this, and I hope that I didn't say anything wrong. I think that there are some eloquent specialists here. Did I say anything wrong? No? Nobody's using eloquent here. Nice. Nice. Okay. Uh, the other one is doctrine. If we we're talking about doctrine two, then it's uh, based, uh, it's data mapper based. Uh, it looks something like this. You need to have an entity and you, have, uh, and you need to have a mapper. The entity uh, is a, an object you need. And by the annotations, like the comments here, you're telling it, uh, the system, telling the, the, the software which will uh, analyze this and create all the necessary connections. Uh, which type is uh, any particular co uh, column. Uh, you can say uh, how it's connected to any other possible entities and by writing something like this and then at the, at the end saying to the en uh, entity mapper that it needs to find article one, then it will go inside the database, look at those uh, annotations, it will analyze, say, okay, I will need to connect that field to that field, this field to, to, to another field, and it will find the, the wanted article. If I'm not mistaken, I told everything correct. Yeah. You so, have to use the annotations, you can define the mechanism. Yeah, in XML and YAML I know, but this is the, the easiest way to, to, to show the, the example. Uh, when you have a user, so for example, for a user, create a new user, set name to that user, you, can, you just say persist uh, to the entity manager, and if I'm not mistaken, when you say a flush, it will save to the database. Uh, if you want to remove a user, again, you're using an entity man mapper, so it knows for the entity, it knows that there is a user in the system as a class user, and when you say remove uh, one object of that type, it will remove it. When you say flush, it will really flush it from the database. Again, there is no SQL here. You're not using any SQL, you're just using an object. Doctrine has relationships and way more. I, I'm really not a specialist in, in doctrine and it's really, really good. But the data mapping, the data mapper pattern has, uh, and the way doctrine is used, uh, has a slightly higher learning curve than eloquent. Uh, it seems that everyone here is using doctrine, so you, you obviously pass that, that uh, learning curve, but it has a steeper, uh, steeper and higher learning curve. But uh, surprisingly, it's blazing fast for a norm because the analyzer who uses the annotations to analyze how it works uh, gets the, the speed that's comparable to the native My MySQL calls. Well, one of the benefits uh, why you get a flush call there is that you can batch multiple operations in one connection. Basically. Yeah, in one big transaction, yeah. But uh, when when you uh, look at the when you look at the benchmarks, uh, if you're using a standard uh, MySQL one uh, first uh, query, second query, third query, and if you're using this, uh, this is faster. When you're using transactions in standard MySQL, then that those transactions are faster. But in normal use, this is faster than, than a normal uh, usage of normal programmer who just d does a query, then another query, then a third query. So in that case, uh, doctrine is really, really, really fast. 
And as I said, I want to talk about idiom. <laughs> Uh, idiom is a deliberately simple orm. So I, I, I was talked about eloquent, which is nice, big, a, a really good <coughs> active record orm. I talked a little bit about doctrine, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking about a micro orm. It follows the Pareto principle. 80% of the effects come from 20% of the causes. So. 80% of the time, you just need 20% of any of those ORMs possibilities, like they say in every software. So, EDORM has only one class called ORM, just one. It uses PDO, so everything nice about it uh, is uh, present here, and it's not a full active record ORM. It's, it's something much, much more simpler. This is in fact, what I, I wanted to show, just this. For a five minute talk, this would be enough. Uh, what is this? This is the simple select, update, insert, and delete with EDORM. I need one file, and just one file. You can get it through Composer, and you can, yeah, auto-load it and stuff like that, but you need just one file. You need to configure somehow the database. I'm using here the SQLite as I'm uh, teaching to my students. I uh, don't like to give them the dump from the database and then expect them to, to know how to up, uh, upload it in some, in, insert it in their database, so I'm just giving them SQLite file. But you can configure anything that PDO uh, supports. And then you're just telling, okay, ORM for this table, where whatever you want to do, find one or find many. And you get an object. This object is of type ORM, and I will show it a little bit later. And then you can change that person's name, for example, and just do save. You can create a new object. Or you can, if you find this one, for example, this one we found first, you can delete it. Those are the most simple operations that you do every time. Select, insert, update, delete. And I showed everything here. Th that's it. Idiom can be configured, and there are a lot of different things you can do. You can configure where to connect through PDO, uh, additional things about PDO. You can choose which is the primary key, because it expects that the primary key is the field called ID. If you don't use the ID, you can call it whatever you want. For example, primary key, or if you have a compound primary key, you can use those. Uh, you can uh, connect to several tables in your database, so you can give the new ID for every table you have. So you can say, okay, it's not called just ID, it's called person ID, or role ID, or whatever you want. It's just the configuration. You can, uh, you, there are options for logging. There is an option for, for caching, but the cache is, is very stupid cache. So, but there is some kind of cache. But when you look at, if we go back, when you look at the, the simplest example, this is all you need 80% of the time. If you want to find something with ID5, it will look uh, exactly like it looks in Eloquent. So you say, okay, for table person, find one that's the, the ID5. Uh, if you want to find a person with the name Stipe, so you say, okay, for table person, where name Stipe, find one. Both of these uh, queries does uh, something that's not directly object-oriented um, it's, it's not nice for object-oriented programming because it creates an ORM object of the database, or it, it gives false, and that object looks something like this. And if you look at all the, the properties here, protected, 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 I think everything is protected. So you can do anything without, with it, without the use of the idiorm orm. But as I said, it's very, very simple orm. Just, uh, it, it's just uh, made to, to use it, it's, it's intended. If you need to get 
something as an array, you just need to say, okay, I need to get that as an array. So you can get the data out of it as an array, but most of the time you want to use it like it's an ORM object because then you can get all the benefits. If I find where name is Tipe and I echo its name, I know it's, it's bad, uh, big letters, capital letters for, for the name of the fields, but it's an example for my students, so who cares? Uh, <laughs> Uh, it's easier to, 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 to see it in, in the black, on the board. So if you echo this, you will get Stipe, no problem. But if I change this and do a save, it will change the original object in the, it will change the original object and then it will change, after the save, it will change the database. But if I do this, I get just the data which is here. I will get just this. I can do anything with it, it's not a problem. I have an ID and then I can update, select, whatever I want. But this is nice if I'm, go if I'm sending it to my templating engine. Okay, no problem, but if I'm using it as an object, then this as array isn't uh, a use usable thing. So you can get it as an array or you can get uh, an object we can, which you can use forever, whatever you need afterwards. Uh, of course, you can get uh, many objects. You don't need to just find one. You can find many, then you can iterate through, through them and do whatever you need. You can directly uh, get an array of those. So if you need just to, to send to your templating engine, you can just do a find array and whatever it finds, it will just give it an, as an array. Uh, this is for just an example. For all of this, you can get just this. Sometimes you want to uh, do a raw where, then this is a raw version of where. Uh, for everything else, you, you just have what? Where, order by ascending, and you get find many. Whatever, uh, how many elements there are, you will, all, you will get all of them. The only problem I found with it, because I'm using it in almost all of my projects, either it or a active record version of it called Paris, uh, the joins are clunky. The joins are done uh, not so nice. So this is an example of join. Somebody who says, but this looks rather okay. Yeah, if you're joining just one table. If you're joining more than one table and you want to do uh, something like not just select all, but select particular fields, then it does look ugly. So I don't like the joins, but I can't do anything about it. If you want an active record version of EDR, there is a one called Paris from the same author. This is directly from the documentation. Uh, I, uh, I didn't have time to find my own examples about it. But uh, it just says that you need to extend the model, model and then you can have relationships and the this part looks similar to, to a classic idiom, and it works pretty much the same, but due to, to the idea of an object which is really extending of the original model and not using the ORM, but using the model factory and then uh, afterwards using the, the object, it looks much nicer than the original and all the relationships when they are preserved, you, get, uh, you can have some things uh, much easier than using a classic idiom. So I want to talk just the last 10 slides, but the guy said make the, the longer presentation. So what's the conclusion? Use ORM. It doesn't matter what ORM you're using, just use it. Especially if you're a beginner, just try to, to, to force yourself to use some ORM. Uh, I'm giving idiom to my students because it's really, really simple. It doesn't have any learning curve. You, you're just using it. So uh, use any ORM you can. Uh, that's like the, the title says, it's the norm today. Uh, if a programmer experiences with and uses some framework, you probably have an ORM there and you're probably already using it. Most of you probably use some kind of ORM. And almost all of them are great. Those who are not are, are easily abandoned. About the EDORM. Uh, EDORM is very, very simple and 
As such, it doesn't offer a lot, but it does offer something. It offers a beginners some insight into the world that where there is no sequel. Okay, there will be sequel, but there is no sequel for most of their uh, queries. Uh, they they already know about tables and joins, and I say brainwashed students, they are most my students, mostly brainwashed to use SQL and it must be done like this. Uh, most of the time it's much easier just to use a simple worm and just get the data out of it very, very fast and simple. Small projects where you don't want to have a complicated setup, you just get one file and just use it. And the third, where I'm mostly using it, is when you get somebody else's code who used a standard MySQL or whatever database uh, they used, uh, queries, and you're looking at it and you're just saying, hell no. Uh, in that case, just requiring one file, you get uh, an option of not using standard SQL queries. You get all the nice benefits of simple ORMs or normal ORMs. Yeah, it's not a full ORM, but for its worth, requiring one file and just works. That's it. Any questions? No questions? Can you connect to multiple databases? Yes. Yes, uh, in that case, you need uh, to, to uh, for each connection to the database, you're using the same uh, original class, but when you're connected to, when you uh, make a query to one database and you get an object, that object knows to which database it's connected. So you, you can connect to various databases without a problem. I saw the static call, so if you connect to database number one and then to database number two, then you have to connect to number one again if you want to do it. Uh, I, I never did the, uh, the <laughs> two database. Uh, I, I, haven't, I did it once, but I both, of the, both time I used the uh, SQLite uh, file, so I, I don't know what happened. Uh, Underneath, but they say in the documentation that it supports multiple connections to multiple databases at the same time, so it shouldn't have problems with that. Any other questions? I sometimes call idiom idiot orm because if you don't know how to use that, then you're an idiot. So. Um, yeah, uh, just to conclude, if you have no questions, there are a lot of different simple ORMs out there. Uh, and I looked at at least six or seven of them because before I uh, decided to go with Idiorm. Uh, Idiorm has a very nice documentation and there is a community on Stack Overflow which helps when something goes bad. Most of the other uh, simple ORMs are not, either not as maintained or uh, they don't have the community behind it. So this one, uh, th there is a lot of different tutorials, as I said, Stack Overflow has uh, posts about it. Uh, most of the simple uh, frameworks, if you're using something like Slim or uh, Silex, uh, it's mostly connected uh, or either Idiorm or Paris is used with, with them. So if you're going like micro everything, then Idiorm is probably the, the best storm you, you can choose. That's it? Okay.